let's go over the, the rise and fall of Fry's Electronics today. This is the old store I used to work at. This is the store I first moved to Texas, got a job. This is the very first job I ever had when it came to a job in Texas, which is kind of crazy. It's probably the first tech job I ever had. And I have a lot of fond memories, but there's also some things about Fry's a lot of people don't know that I actually want to kind of tell you about. Why it, why it failed. <laughs> and it's not just, hey, Amazon moved in because there's always Micro Center and other people that had the same business model that are still in business today. So let's go into Fry's a little bit. I also have some other photos I wanted to show you. Right now, they're just kind of taking all the, all the Fry's electronics carts, box them up, putting them in a truck somewhere. The doors are shuttered. I can't really get anything other than this front shot, but I at least wanted to kind of take you on a journey of Fry's Electronics for nostalgia purposes. I have so many great memories, so many great people I met at Fry's when I worked there, and yeah, it's just kind of a, a, a great spot in my life that I'd love to go over and talk about Fry's. Now many people watching this video may not know what Fry's Electronics is. After all, it was just this massive big box electronics store that was mainly in California and Texas. Because I actually moved to Texas. This was my first job, as I said, when I came to Texas and it was an amazing place. I'd never seen anything quite like it. And uh, I wanna walk you through the store just so you get kind of a feel for how awesome this place was. Uh, even though this isn't necessarily pictures from its heyday, just stuff I could find around Google. Here was the entryway. Off to the right, which you can't see, was the returns desk and loss prevention kind of hidden in a closet. To the right of that, you go in a little bit, you'll see the computer component section. This, uh, I have a couple shots. This was such a fun place. You could pick out a motherboard, CPU, memory. Uh, this is where I spent most of my, my time because you'd had everything, even soldering irons and other things. It, it was a great place to go, and I still have stuff from this section, which I went and bought. And past that, go a little bit further, you can see this piano and the cafe in the backside. The cafe, not very many people ever went to. Uh, but I worked mainly in computer sales off to the right, where I'd sold computers as one of my first electronic sales jobs. And then finally, the checkout here. There's other, a lot of other aspects, audio, video, car stereo. They, they did a whole bunch of different things in this store, but the checkout area was always interesting because I have so many memories. There's like 50 checkout lanes. It was insane. You can see the cage off to the right here. You could pick out drinks. I remember people getting in fights because uh, I remember one Black Friday, though some guy picked a, something out of another person's cart and the person just turned around and clocked them and then they, you know, massive fight broke out and we had to call the police and or actually there was a, somebody on site and they got arrested and it was crazy. Totally bizarre, actually pretty normal for a Black Friday at Fry's because it was always kind of nuts. And almost every Friday ad day, you run into stuff like that. So what made Fry's so great? Well, I think a lot of people built their first computers there. If you were in California or Texas, this was one of the very first big box stores that had like tons of motherboards, had tons of selection. It was amazing. So many great memories there. You could buy cases, anything you want, and, you know, kind of... Uh, build your first custom PC. And, and that's why so many people have great memories of fries. And I personally have a ton of great memories as this was the first job I ever had where I met people that followed me through my career. Uh, I remember my supervisor one, which was in charge of desktop PC. His name was Mike Medeiros, huge influence on my career. I actually followed him to you know various businesses and worked with him probably four or five different businesses throughout my career because he was extremely skilled, not as a supervisor. He actually had a lot of server knowledge prior to getting a job at Fry's and being a supervisor. I learned some of the very first uh, servers off of him. I remember working on Windows Server 2000 and him showing me all the different configuration, setting up 
the first server for a business later on in life, uh, even though I was doing it and just kind of like a, he was like my mentor for the most part when it came to some of my early learnings of servers. It was amazing to get that hands-on experience. And, you know, we, heck, we went out and drank so much after that. So what went wrong? <laughs> That's what a lot of people did. I even got in comments, hey, what went wrong with fries? Um, and I'll tell you what went wrong. It had some various things. Obviously, Amazon didn't do it any favors, but we see Micro Center thriving, and Micro Center is like the you know successor of fries for the most part. Micro Center is amazing. I still go there, and still that's where I got my 5600 back there. They're one of the few people you could actually go and wait in line to go get these processors. So Amazon and Big Box, some pivots need to happen, and Fry's obviously couldn't make that leap. But it goes deeper than that. There's a lot of things about Fry's that I think a lot of ex-employees just never really share. So buckle up. I'm going to try and stay as neutral as I can, but albeit I'm probably going to be a little negative here. So you be warned. Uh, they weren't very kind to their employees, and I can give a couple examples of this. This earlier shot of the piano, I remember a guy being on the piano and just getting fired for it because he wasn't, uh, He's, I guess he took some time off, sat down and decided to play a little jingle and uh, my supervisor didn't take too kindly to that and fired him right on the spot. There was also some crazy shenanigans with the returns. And returns and fries have always been dicey. If you went into a fries, you never got an open box. It was just one of those things. The returns had very little quality control. Uh, the last experience I had at Fry's was about three years ago. I bought some memory and someone actually stripped off the heat sinks and put them on the new one and swapped out, I think, 3,200 for 2,400 memory and the returns guy missed it. So that's one of those things where it's like, hey, I didn't buy open box memory, but that's what they gave me. And there's so many other instances of the returns going awry at Fry's. I would say any motherboard that was open box, it was almost like 90% sure that motherboard probably didn't work and it was just being resold. So terrible returns policy definitely attributed to a decline in Fry's, but also the loss prevention right next to returns. There was some major issues with that as well because they prosecuted everybody. Like if you stole a candy bar from Fry's, they were going to prosecute you. That's how crazy it was. And uh, I don't know if it was just complete mismanagement. And having worked for so many retailers uh, in my early days, heck, I worked at Blockbuster, Sam Goody, Suncoast, Best Buy later on after Fry's. I went through various management loss prevention classes. I will tell you, there's an amount of shrink that is just acceptable. You have so much that you just expect to write off and lose in retail. Fry's, I think, just tried to cut too many corners here. And one, having just acceptable losses, I think, was an important thing. And they just didn't give enough to this section. I think they were too cheap uh, when it came to the upper management. But also, it was commission sales. And it was commission sales gone wrong because... I remember as a computer sales guy, they had these Fujitsu laptops, and those laptops were terrible. Uh, they were overpriced, nobody really knew the brand, and they gave the biggest margin. So everybody in sales always pushed them because you could make upwards of $300 off just one or two Fujitsu laptops when you sold them back in the early 2000s. And that's nuts if you're getting these massive rips off of selling these laptops. So a lot of times you're incentivizing the employees to sell uh, overpriced equipment that necess didn't necessarily meet the standard. And yeah, that was kind of a, a shady thing and also kind of punishing a lot of the staff when things were sold at a good deal to the customer. A good example is uh, that Soup One I talked about, Mike Medeiros, he... I know lost like 50% of his income overnight when they started selling great quality desktop computers and his salary getting cut from like 70 or 80,000 to like 40 and his paychecks just like almost evaporating overnight to where he could barely scrape by. And it was that way for a long time until he quit, I believe. That's nuts. Uh, you can't do that to your employees. You can't just be like, hey, I know you're making double this yesterday, but we're just going to 
cut all your commissions and basically bone you. And they did this to him. They did it to, to the sales force too. There was a massive walkout. And actually I left with that walkout and was my final thing of fries. And it was nuts. It was just kind of a wild way to do things. They should have never done commission sales. I think Best Buy's model was the one to follow. I don't know why they didn't. Because even though I was making more money at Fry's when I left to make, take a lot less, I took a big pay cut to go to Best Buy. I love Best Buy. I always enjoyed it. Fry's, I always have all these kind of dark memories of uh, some just it just didn't make me feel good. I, I felt like the company just didn't care about me. And I think I was pretty much the majority when it came to Fry's electronics, you know, employees and probably customers as well. And now there was probably many other things I can go over, but I don't want to be overly negative in this video. Uh, Fry's, I do have a lot of fond memories of. Like I said, I, I don't know if I'd be in the spot I'm in today without some of the people I met at Fry's and the, the relationships that I built. And some of the greatest memories of my life are from that era because I was in my low 20s. I remember going out and us just having a great time after work. It was just so much fun in a lot of ways. And some of my first custom builds. I remember I built my first uh, system, I think it was like 2002, 2003 with the the LEDs and the window before, you know, that was a really big thing. And I had a, one of my brother's friends come over and look at my computer. He's like, dude, that looks amazing. I'll pay you $600 for this computer. I'm like, okay. And he didn't even ask the specs or anything. It was like two or three year old components in it. And it was worth maybe $300 at the time. And I was, I remember selling that computer to just a guy that saw it was like, that looks crazy awesome. And uh, yeah, <laughs> RGB sold it. It was kind of funny back then. But I have all these memories and, and a lot of that came from Fry's. An end of an era for sure. I'm going to take a lot of those good memories. And now that I've said all those bad memories out loud, I think we could just say, hey, lesson learned for any other businesses out there want to stay away from the pitfalls of fries. Just remember to take care of your employees. But with that, what are your favorite memories of fries? Let me know in the comments. And if you'd like, I can actually do another one of these types of videos. I've worked at Blockbuster, Sam Goody, Suncoast, and uh, Best Buy is actually where I went all the way up to a regional level for the most part. So I can give you a little bit behind the scenes of all these different places as well. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.